and this is Mark Shine, and together we're here to bring you another installment of A Closer Look with Mark and Mark. It's aptly named. Good thing yeah, we're named yeah. Mark. Huh? Good you idea. having a bad hair day, Coach? No, no, no. Here's what happened. Last week I was uh, supposed to be on a sports report, so I came in to tie my tie. I went to the dressing room back here, and I just happened to find this among the hair care products. It's called Plump and Thick. And my first response was, there is no female is ever going to buy a product <laughs> called Plump and Thick. No, it's, it's empty, though. It's empty. Somebody yeah, used it. somebody's using it. And then What's I this found one? this, well, because of the Super Bowl, this one's called Max Hold for offensive yeah, linemen. Know. That happens. Okay, that happens line. a we lot. Well, I right. thought we weren't going to talk Super Bowl. Well, I, we had to talk about Max Hold, okay. though. So. Hey, we got some stat stuff for some guys right. that had some great games, put up a lot of numbers. Well, some of these names we've heard before. Yeah. How about this one? Jar Ward, another big game for Jar Ward. Two of them, actually. Lima Senior, he scored 32 with a three-point field goal against Toledo Central Catholic in track play. And then 29 with two three-point field goals against Toledo Rogers on a Saturday night game. Spartans are on a roll right now, playing pretty well. Jay Kaufman from Ottawa Glandorf, 19 against Kenton on a Friday night WBL game, came back with 30 points and seven rebounds Saturday against Napoleon. And Anthony Masterlasco, there's a name we've heard a lot of from Liberty Benton. 22 against Riverdale, 25 with a couple of three-point field goals against Lima Central Catholic. And Anthony Masterlasco and Liberty Benton Eagles have won eight in a row now, driving towards the BBC crown. Tim Krieger, the big guy from Delphi St. John's, 18 against St. Henry, 22 against Lincoln View, one better. They've got nine wins yep. in a row over there at DSJ. There they go. And now this week, I get to see Minster on Saturday night. They had a couple big performances last week. Mike Kentner in a win over Marion Local. We had people tell us that was one of the best high school basketball games of the year when Minster beat Marion Local. But Mike Kentner, 24 with five three-point field goals. His teammate Aaron Erst had 17 with five three-point field How about that? A pair of guys with five three-point field That's goals. Three pointers. And they both came back with 13 uh, points and two three-point field goals against, uh, against Jackson Center on Saturday night. Kyle Nunn from Finley. We saw him several weeks yeah. ago. He was awesome. He had 20 points and an overtime win over Fremont Ross and 21 against Shawnee on Saturday. Justin Irons from Versailles had 34 with six three-point field goals against New Knoxville. That's 12 wins in a row for the Tigers. They're state-ranked. Balen Stinson and Dante Johnson combined for 44 points in that overtime win for Elida over Shawnee. And uh, Javon Sharp from down in Kenton. Now, usually we talk about Kenton, we talk about the Phillips brothers, but Javon Sharp, 23 with four three point field goals and a lost Ottawa Glandorf, 21 on Saturday night, and three more three point field goals as a win over Upper Soda Valley. Ian Finn from Fort Jennings. They lost on Friday to Miller City, but he had 21 and three threes, came back in a win over Allen East with 22 points and three more threes. All right, and one more addition to the 1,000-point club. Wade Stoffer from Continental had 16 in their win over Columbus Grove. That put Wade over 1,000 points, and obviously PCL play for Continental, good, good for him. Join the 1,000-point club. All right, let's move on to our plays of the week this week. And First of all, we got to thank Andy Lynch. He did a great job of the video on this. Most people would have quit, and you'll see why as we go through this. This is uh, uh, Ayersville and Wayne Trace, and watch that one, thrown by Jalen Martinez <laughs> right at the end of the quarter break. Watch, here he is right down here catching the basketball. The official has just signaled three-point field goal. All right, we're going to leave the court, and everybody's going to be happy. But no, watch this. If this ball didn't hit the backboard, it's headed to Lake Erie. <laughs> That's as hard as you can throw he one off the glass. He chucked that baby, didn't he? Yes, he did. And when you think about it, you know, that right there, that's a, that's a one-point game, and they win by, by one. Obviously, yeah. that three-point field got a huge part of it uh, earlier in the basketball game. And then, let's move to a couple plays that we saw in the Fort Laramie game. Fort Laramie is in the black here against uh, Marion Local. This is what coaches call a lot of different names, but uh, my favorite one is Penetrate and Pitch, the, the offensive player who is Evan Burning, draws the defense to him. And then when he does that, you can see he spots up a teammate on the three-point line, Dylan Braun. Here's the penetration dribble coming right in the lane right through here. Two defenders come to help. So we actually have two different players that are open. And watch how Coach Guttermiller reacts right down at the bottom in the yellow shirt because he knows his defense had to react. And that left a three-point shooter open. And bang, exit of two of them open right there. And then another example of this is a screen and roll play. This is going to be, once again, Evan Burning and the 6'7 junior, Tyler Siegel. And here's Ed Mesher's guarding him. He can't guard very well because he's got foul situations. Let's look at it again. Here comes the screen right here. And then watch what a great job Siegel does because he turns this way into the lane so he can see the receiver. Most guys turn the wrong way and can't see the pass. And when he does that, he's in a perfect position to catch the ball. Watch him open up to the ball, 
and there's a nice bounce pass under the defensive arms and then up in the power layup and score. And that's a nice team they've got down there at Fort Laramie right Mr. now. Mr. Burning did that all night long. He did He's that. He's a good floor player. Their yeah. ability to take the ball inside in the lane and make things happen was outstanding yeah. for Fort Laramie Redskins the other sure night. Sure was. Thanks for that, Coach. Hey, a couple of bright spots this week. First of all, Andy Lynch uh, supplied us with this video and also was very involved in this. The FCA guys, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, fellows at UNOH, decided they wanted to do a little something for the community and have a little fun. So they asked the police if they would play them in a game at the garage. And here's uh, some footage of that game. But they asked people to bring cans of food. And there it is. And they donated it to the local food bank. So not only did they have a little fun, they did some nice things for their community. Good job to the FCA guys at UNOH. And thank you to Andy Lynch and FCA for uh, providing that footage for us to show you. And then you know, the king, they there call him the go. king, Richard Quartercracks, retired from coaching at Kaleida. And this weekend, they named the gym after him. And what a night that was for the Quartercracks family. Yeah, you can see the superintendent there, Al Lobenthal. What a great job they did. Uh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong guy's name. But anyway, you can see that uh, we've handed over the, the uh, trophy there, the plaque. It's going to go up in at uh, Kaleida. A lot of former players there, former coaches. And what Dick had, how many wins? I know you've got it on your oh, sheet there, eight, but... Uh, 877. How about that? In fact, yeah. we're going to lead into some other coaches. Congratulations, Coach K. Won a state championship, and yeah. good, good for you. That does lead us in because Coach Quartercracks is the winningest coach ever in the state of Ohio high school basketball. So we decided we've had so many great coaches in this area. Let's see where the other guys rank. There you see Coach Quartercracks, a state championship in 81. Also coached at Fort Jennings Ottoville. Most of his wins at Kaleida. Bob Arnson, 676 wins, one state championship at Delphi St. John's his whole career. Fran Gilbo, he's number 10 on the all-time list with 625. He got three state championships down there at St. Henry. That's just amazing those two guys were at the same school the whole time. And then not in the top 10, but with over 500 wins, Al Welch from Wayne Trace, 540 with a championship in 91. And Bob Segerson, the most recent. 2010, 518 wins at Lima Central Catholic. Next week, we're going to look at the guys with over 300 wins. we got a bunch of those in this area, too. What yeah. great coaches we have had and still have in high school basketball in this area. It speaks to, obviously, the skill coaching the basketball team, but it also speaks to longevity. And when you're willing to stay at a game that long and it's getting harder and harder as the sports become more and more of a 12-month-a-year situation, you know, a lot harder to do, and quite honestly, parents and communities and things like that make it more difficult sometimes too. But congratulations to those guys for That's longevity right. as well. That's part of our Where Are They Now segment. Well, it'll be a two-parter. Yep. We'll do the other part next week. Now, rules. Five-second right. well, closely week, guarded. All right, this week, the five-second closely guarded rule. And I thought we would kind of look at that this week. Mark can go through that. There's about four things to think about as we look at this particular rule. Number one, did you establish legal guarding position and in the front court? Can't be in the backcourt. The reason is you cannot have two counts going at the same time. So that guy's back there counting 10 until you get the ball over midcourt. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you, see, you can't have two counts at the same time. So it has to be in the front court. It has to be a closely guarded situation. Now, the rule book says six foot. My uh, opinion of that is we make them get a lot closer mm -hmm. than that. If you yeah. think of six foot, that's the free throw line to the top of the circle behind the free throw shooter. That's six foot. They're usually close. Yeah, we usually make them get a little bit closer to that, and then I'm more guilty of that as well. It has to be continuous. And one of the questions is, well, what about a switch? Player A is guarding him. Player B steps up, plays a screen and roll. As long as both players, or at least one of them, is always in contact with that player, you can actually have a switch and keep that five-second uh -huh. count going go. as well. It ends any time that the offensive player breaks a contact with the defensive player, or as we did last week with the charge foul, gets his head and shoulders past the defensive player. Here's something a lot of people don't understand. You can hold the ball for four seconds, you can dribble the ball for four seconds, and you can hold it again for four seconds. So you could actually have the ball for 12 oh. seconds and be in a closely guarded situation and not have a loose possession of the basketball. So it'd be pretty rare, obviously, but you yeah. could hold it for four, dribble for four, hold it for four more, and, and not have a, a five count yet. Okay, so it starts over, huh? Start, yes, well, it yeah, does. Yeah. And, and you'll see. I mean, first of all, you'll see this one. That means they're not close enough. Okay, we're counting with this hand. As soon as you go to the other hand, we change counts. Okay. There we go. Good deal. Thank you for that. Hey, we got some great games coming up. Coach Shine says, we have a great game in every conference that might determine the league championship. They really could, At yeah. least for this point in the season. Right. And, and we're not sure we can get every league in yeah. in the time that we're allowed yeah. today. So we picked out some of them, but it looks like every league has a big game this week. 
Wapakoneta at Ottawa Glendorf in the Western Buckeye League. Here we go. Wapak, 17-1, maybe the surprise team of all. Not that they're good, but they're being 17-1 with a single loss to Minster. Obviously, they're 6-0 in conference play against Ottawa Glendorf up at the Supreme Court. Ottawa Glendorf, they are 16-2. They also obviously are 6-0. Uh, each team has St. Mary's left to play. Wapak goes to Van Wert yet. Elida, uh, OG goes to Elida yet. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out who the leading scorer is for Wapak. Can't Seven do Seven different players have led them in scoring different during the course of the year. Nine players have made at least one three-point field goal. You switch over to the OG side. Jay Kaufman, 18 and a half points a game. He's had games of 32 against Van Wert, 30 against Napoleon. I really like the point guard Owen Hegel. He is really coming around. He's averaging double figures, uh, particularly the last six games. Jake Dybul's a force inside. Uh, OG tied Defiance last year uh, for the 2016 for the league championship. Uh, Wapak has not won a league championship since the 89-90 season when they tied wow. Shawnee. Okay. Big thing for them. And then if you look at OG, they've got a great game on, with Lexington on Saturday night, too. A non-league game, obviously. Lexington's 14-4. So a big weekend for the Titans this weekend, right before the tournament draw. Let's go to the Northwest Conference. Surprise, surprise, Spencerville and Crestview are going to play for, for maybe a championship, although Jefferson's at 4-1. and one. They may still have a little something to say about this. But Spencerville comes in 13-4, 6-0 in the league. Crestview is 12-4, 5-0 in the league. Spencerville obviously has played one more game. They're ahead of, of uh, Crestview in that way. Senior leaders for Spencerville, Pritchard, Two Crofts, Shrelucky. They've played well all year long. They also have a tough one on Saturday. They go to Marion Local. But uh, they've, uh, they've got this one to get out of the way before they got Jefferson later on. Crestview, very young team, ahead of schedule according to coach. They do it with balanced scoring, but you're going to recognize some young guys' names. Klein, Etzler, you see them in the score, scoring book almost every time. At Wayne Trace Saturday in a local war yep. against, with two really good teams, but the coach will keep them focused. This is the first, most important. They have at Allen East and Bluffton left, but this could be for the league championship. And you and I get to be there. We will Look, be there. Looking, looking forward, forward to that. To it. In the PCL, we have Miller City at 5-0. They're going to Kaleida, who's 3-2, but on the upswing lately. Uh, seven of the nine games recently by Miller City are wins. They have a two-point loss to Lincoln View in there, a two-point loss to Holgate. So other than that, they played really well in seven out of the last nine games. Kaleida is 6-2 since they had a one-point loss to Spencerville, um, mostly because of their defense. Over those last eight games, their defense is down to 41.9 points per game. And that includes a 55 points that give up the lipstick that went into overtime. Sebenex, their leading scorer at 12.3 in the last eight games. They also have Ayersville on Saturday night. How about this? These one. teams with big games on Friday night and then a huge non-conference mm -hmm. game on Saturday night. Ayersville, of course, is undefeated number one in the state. Big weekend for Kaleida. Big weekend for Miller City if they can win this one and clinch the PCL. How to get them ready for tournament. Let's go to the BVC. Lipsick, 10 and 6, 7 and 1 at Van Buren. 14-2, 7-1. Both are chasing 8-0 Liberty Benton. Lipsick is the only, their only BVC loss was at PG, 53-43. How about this? They're in that two-league thing. They're 2-3 yeah. in the PCL, but 7-1 in the BVC. They go to Liberty Benton on February 22nd. Yeah. Based on this game, that could determine the championship because Liberty Benton has already beaten Van Buren. That's their only loss in overtime, 63-58. They're getting healthy for tournament, got a football injury back, four games in eight days starting on Monday, and so we're going to find out a lot about Van Buren in this game in the next couple. Van Buren hoping for a win, and a Lipsick win over LB, and they That's get a right. three-way try tie through that one. Let's look very quickly at Temple and Perry in the NWC. Uh, Perry's got the thing locked up if they just win one of their last two games. Temple, of course, with their three-point shooters, the great balance that we've seen recently and high-scoring games. They've been over 80 in the month of January and now into February at Perry. They've been scoring well. Every game be a real challenge for, for Temple Christian to match up with them this week. Perry wins this game or one of their last two and their NWC champions. All right. Hey, it's getting close to tournament. The draw for them on the boys' side is this Sunday. Right. The girls had it last Sunday. And we're going to do something a little special for you on Sunday. Just a couple of hours after the actual drawing, Mark Shine and myself are going to be joined by Sean Boley and Nick Burke, And we're going to have the postseason preview show. PSPS, we like to call it. English teachers are going crazy yeah. with post and pre in the same sentence. But nonetheless, that's pretty descriptive. That'll be a lot of fun. Be a lot of fun. We'll be in here with a couple different sets. We'll go through each one of the brackets 
and then have a little bit of a time to analyze on each one of those brackets and look ahead to see who's going to play who and what the big games are in the tournament. Is that going to air at 6? It airs at 6 o'clock Sunday o'clock on Sunday, yes, so join us. We'll have that preview show for you and lay up all the brackets. Hey, let's put up our games that are coming up this week, and oh my goodness, do they have some great ones lined up for you. It's not going to, not going to diminish from here all the way through the rest of the season. There you can see the February 10 and 12 games. And then tournament starts to hit. Stay with us for the ride. It's going to be a lot of fun. We appreciate you joining us on a closer look. We'll see you next week.